This is the video of my folding knife collection by Cold Steel. Currently, this is summer 2022, July 2022. Who knows? Might get something real new real soon, but this is what it is as of now. And I'm going to go smallest to largest. Okay, first is the Micro Recon 1. This wrote on my keys for a long time. Hollow Ground, OS 8, Micro... Um, triad lock here and then it's got some sort of a coil spring set up in here and uh, i can't remember exactly how it works but it's different from a regular full-size cold steel triad lock okay next up this is one of the bath one of our bathroom knives uh, sorry for not cleaning it up this is the tough light with serrations os8 this is a great knife i've thought about getting uh the, the smaller ones and other versions of this but um Excellent, excellent work knife. I love their serrations. Next is my most recent. This just came yesterday when uh, this came in the mail. This was a free gift from uh, from Rock, um, Smoky Mountain Knife Works. This is the Kudu Light. And I'll tell you, I had a bad experience with the original Kudu with the pull ring. It... Uh, it broke on me immediately. Actually, I can't even remember. Maybe I was even doing the unboxing of it. Uh, but I always wanted to give the Kudu a second chance, and this sort of non-locking, slip-jointy kind of version will fit the bill. This is 5CR15 uh, MOV steel. That's right, 5CR. All right, next up, this is my dedicated backpack folder. Has been for a long time. Uh, this is the Recon 1. This is the OS 8 version. I put a little sharpening notch in there myself. I need to do that on some of my other versions. Um, I took the coating off with aircraft stripper and it revealed such a beautiful stone wash. And this is back in the day when they were beautifully hollow ground. Very sharp knife, um, wonderfully broken in, uh, great knife. Next up, this is uh, my go bag folder. So the, the uh, our sort of uh, my escape kit from the from the house or whatever. This is the folder that resides in there. This is OS 8. This is the Voyager Large. And uh, this is the clip point, obviously. Andrew Demko design, awesome, uh, one-handed action. Could even say fidgety, uh, could be. A lot of these, uh, I think a lot of the um, triad lock knives are very fidgety. Awesome knife, uh, very utilitarian. This is an early one that I got in, uh, got from Knife Center early on in the, in 1999 or so, I believe, 98 or 99. Uh, the, the El Hombre, this is the four inch bladed version of, at the time, the Vaquero Grande, which you'll see a little bit later. Uh, this is before they came out with the Voyager series, but this is sort of the proto Voyager in Vaquero. Uh, the, the funny story about this to me, the thing I always remember about this is that little stain, and then there's a stain um, that just generally resides on, on towards the end of the blade that was put in there on a camping trip a long time ago from a certain kind of tofu. And I'm like, man, if this tofu can stain steel, you know that stuff's bad for you. So I uh, went back to eating meat. All right, next up from that same era... Uh, this is a Voyager, right? Yeah, I guess it. Uh, I guess that was before they had the Voyager. They hadn't brought the uh, Vaquero shape into the Voyager lineup yet. Uh, I got this in 1998. I remember I was working on a movie in New York City, and I was like, I got to get a new knife, you know, so I can work on this movie properly. And this was the knife I got. It was great, and I did use it quite a bit. And uh, I practiced sharpening when I got the KME sharpening system, which I haven't really done much with since I got it, uh, though I put a screaming sharp edge on this one. Uh, I do like this uh, four inch. It's got that old uh, integrated clip and uh, a lot of good memories in this knife. Uh, that is the, oh, and I put this on there because there was no way if you were thrusting with this, there was no way to stop your hand from sliding up on the blade. So just in case I got into a high speed, low drag situation, I had that lanyard to stop my hand from going up onto the onto the blade. Uh, next up is the tie light. Had this one a long time too. Uh, carried this a lot. This was my EDC for a while, uh, late 90s, early 2000s. 
um, great uh, liner lock knife. Uh, of course, you get that sort of flicking action. This was one of the first knives I ever flicked like that, just a thumb flick without slow rolling it out. And uh, you can use these quillions to wave it out of your pocket. Um, of course, it's very evocative of the Italian stiletto. Always kind of wish they switched the geometry of the quillions and had this one up here so you could brace your thumb against it like so. And then this one down here so it would hook even more sure when you wave it out of your pocket. You can use a little bit of that and a little bit of wrist to flick it open too. Great knife. That's the tie light. And then here's a recent addition to the tie light family. This is the the four inch tie light Chris. This one took a while to break in to be able to open up like that. This really tore up my fingers for a while. Beautifully ground blade. This is Aus 10. Um, Aus 10 blade steel, right? Yeah, Aus 10A blade steel, uh, which I haven't really used this at all, but uh, I do have Aus 10, um, the Scout <clears throat> version of the 4 Max, and it is really good steel, and the way um, cold steel heat treats it, it's excellent. What a great and nasty tactical shape that this is. Great grind. They really did a wonderful job on that blade. You got that same sort of Italian stiletto look, but with that crisp blade. And a lot of, uh, you'll, you'll see that on traditional Italian stiletto switchblades, you'll see that crisp blade. Here's a legendary knife in my collection, the pink cold steel broken skull. Uh, yet designed by Steve Austin. But really, this this is from an earlier, uh, the Lone Star, I believe they called it. Lone Star Hunter was this shape, uh, but they had it in uh, a uh, steel frame with with uh, faux stag covers. And um, But really, this is a profile of the classic uh, hunter shape, uh, the, the two-bladed hunter or single-bladed hunter uh, slip joint knives. That's kind of what this is evocative of four inch blade super sharp very thin fully flat ground this thing is awesome no excuse not to have four inches of super steel on you at all times is what i used to say with this because it's so thin this used to be dedicated ride in the waistband knife for me i carry carry it like that a lot in the summer this is a pool knife a lot often uh too for me and then i have that snaggle tooth mf on there to wave it open when i draw it I originally got the pink broken skull to carry over uh, on a trip overseas, and, and now I would never do that, but at the time I couldn't imagine going without a locking blade, and so this is what I got, and I got it in pink, so I could say, oh, um, you know, oh, my, that's my daughter's, and she's not here, but she left it in my, you know, I don't know, I, I, I just thought uh, pink would be an innocent color, you know, cognitive dissonance and whatnot. Okay, next up, no cognitive dissonance to this one or what it's for. This is the Black Talon II, uh, based on that S-curve design that you see in the Civilian, originally in the Civilian by uh, Spyderco. And the Civilian, that sort of S-shaped, nasty pointed uh, blade. On the Civilian, it's much more dainty uh, right here, not much meat. Uh, this one you could do a lot of work with. It's, it's pretty stout. Uh, the civilian, same shaped edge, uh, just not a very robust blade itself. But anyway, it was designed uh, at the behest of the South African government in the early 90s when there were lots and lots of rapes and lots and lots of murders in the big cities in South Africa. And they, uh, the government or the police over there, I'm not sure who exactly, but um, uh, commissioned from Spyderco something a folder that people could use who have zero training and are just relying on gross motor uh, motions when they're stressed out and full of adrenaline and being attacked. And this is the this is the nasty blade shape they came up with. Well, that's the background. Um, this is the cold steel version, and of course, it kicks ass in every way. You've got the triad lock, which is just gets stouter every time you use it, more sturdy. Look at that giant stop pin, and. Uh, that tab buries itself in the slot ever ever deeper every time you use it. This knife only gets stronger and stronger, uh, as do all of these. Basically, they all have triads almost, except for some of the ones I just showed. Uh, but you add that curve, that terribly horrible, nasty point, and these uh, serrations, and this just makes for 
one hell of a self-defense knife. Uh, this used to be a uh, dedicated inside breast pocket winter jacket <laughs> knife. I don't do that anymore. I carry something smaller, uh, usually my bug out, but I always have a knife in my inside pocket in the winter time. Really cool knife. Okay, next up, uh, the AD-10. I was so happy when this happened, when the AD-10 and the AD-15 finally came out through Cold Steel, because for years I was observing these things uh, as customs uh, from the Demco knife shop and wondering, like, why don't, why doesn't Cold Steel do that knife? Uh, seeing them dance around the design a little bit, um, but then Andrew Demko finally licensed the design to them, and Cold Steel did such an amazing job reproducing these. And now, I, I can't say that firsthand because I've never had or held a, a custom AD-10, but from those who have, and from Andrew Demko and John Demko themselves, Cold Steel just did a does a killer job with the production version of the AD-10. <clears throat> this is from the first run, so you can see it's hollow ground. They stopped doing that after that first run. So this is um, a prized knife indeed. It was a bit of a lemon in that this uh, was stripped, the screw to that was stripped and loose. And so I ended up epoxying it down. You can see a tiny bit of epoxy there, but I was like, I'm never, ever, ever getting rid of this or selling it or going to want to put the clip on the other side. Not that you can, or maybe you can, uh, I, I guess you can, but uh, I was like, I'm never going to not need that epoxy down there. So I did. Uh, just a great knife. This one is S, yeah, 35 VN and really nicely contoured G10, very comfortable, big hand, uh, clip. Great knife. Great knife. Okay, next up, you heard me mention it. This is the AD-15. Same thing. Now he doesn't make these knives or the AD-10, except every once in a while, I think. Mm. But these light, these are licensed to cold steel, so I don't think he does these anymore. This is his Scorpion lock. Um, Andrew Demko is known for his lock. Sorry, I just got my hands all wet, so I couldn't flip it. And uh, this yoke uh, has a big old pin in it, and it sits in that big old notch in the back in the tang of the blade, and just gripping it, I mean, it's already super, super, super strong, but then you grip it and reinforce it, uh, really enhancing it. So this is just a beautiful, sexy design. I remember uh, saying at the time, 8010 to wed, 8015 to bed. I just think it's very, um, you know, it, it, but it is also a great work knife. Now, this one is also first generation, first run, but not uh, hollow ground. This one has always been flat ground. Very robust knife. I know a number of people who, for whom this is their like favorite, uh, like hard use, kick around, take camping kind of knife. I don't mean kick around, but you know what I mean? Like really put to hard use. And I can see why. Uh, just a very, very cool design and quite fidgety. All right, next up uh, is the Immortal, the Immortal. This one is a uh, sort of based, well, to me, it, it is one half Tonto, one half um, uh, uh, Gladius. And that's what this is based on, is the Roman Gladius, hence the Immortals, the Immortal thing. I'm not exactly sure. I think he's kind of mixing his metaphors. Uh, but anyway, it, this is supposed to be uh, the... Um, like the Roman Gladius. So you have that triangular tip for thrusting, but also if you look at it, it is just like an American Tonto. You've got that flat ground tip and that hollow ground long straight. Um, just a great knife. You've got this noggin knocker on the back, uh, which is nicely jimped, which is great for putting your thumb on, but also, uh, you know, for, for pain compliance uh, or, you know, hitting. Uh, that's a very nice surface. That's aluminum, by the way. A very nicely shaped and, and cupped out G10. Uh, kind of a pocket destroyer, but that kind of goes without saying uh, for for cold steel knives. This is CTS XHP steel. I got this from Dave, this old sword blade reviews. Thank you, Dave. Uh, you knew it would fit beautifully in my collection. Now, this next one I got from Jimmy Slash uh, after he was on my show. 
I told him, and I was not fishing, uh, but I told him I, I didn't have a 4MAX scout or a 4MAX at all. And he was like, oh my God, Bobby. And so he sent this to me very generously. And, and I love this thing. And I put it through, I wouldn't say through its paces totally, but this has been a backyard uh, mowing knife. Therefore, it has you know, hewn saplings and uh, vines and other, you know, things um, without any hesitation or, or issue. Very, just a huge, robust knife. That's only four inches, but it, it seems bigger. And it's so broad and it's heavy and it's got those awesome uh, thumb studs, just great ergonomics. And of course, I had to put a big uh, Jimmy Slash style snake lanyard fob on there. And uh, again, uh, as always, and again, the triad lock. I love to see the jimping on the on the lock spring. Just a beautiful, beautiful knife. This really brings this incredible knife into reach uh, at, I think, just at a hundred bucks. Um, this was the knife I was carrying when my first daughter was born. So I was carrying this recently because her birthday was here. Uh, Cold Steel Spartan. This is a great this was this is an older one. Uh, this is Aus 8 blade steel. This was blasted, and uh, my first really hot summer, humid summer in Virginia. This thing rusted like mad, so I uh, just sanded off the the sort of top layer uh, with the blasting. And I love the way it looks. Looks cool, and it really saved the blade uh, from rusting. Super sharp, just a dangerous knife. Oh, these are all just extremely dangerous knives. And then when you every see, whenever you see this thumb plate, like you just did, um, the immortal, uh, it means you can open it with your thumb or you can also wave it out of your pocket. This, I have a poor man's, um, lanyard bead on there. I put that on there years ago and, uh, yep. It just, if I swing it around and pretend to be using this, it just wraps uh, wraps me and is annoying, but for some reason I like it on there. Cold Steel Spartan. This one is one of my, one of the stoutest and most difficult to disengage, uh, triad locks. Next one, this one does not have a triad lock, but it is an early Voyager. Uh, this is a five inch Voyager, hollow ground, beautiful knife. I bought this, believe it or not, in New York City back in the day before before, you know, back when it was reasonable. Uh, but uh, very, very cool shop that was right in Times Square called Roseland Martial Arts. I bought this there and it was my pride and joy for a long time. And also the sharpest knife I had ever experienced uh, to, the, to the moment. I, after really falling for nothing fancy and watching his videos, at some point I bought skateboard tape and put it on there. Um, just a great knife. Uh, that handle is evocative of the old, uh, what do you call it, uh, vaquero, or or the um, uh, the navaja, the Spanish navaja. And you know what? I realized usually I have more light, so I'm gonna hit this with more light. There we go. That curved handle, like a horn, very, very, very nice. Love this thing, and very sharp. Also, that lock extremely strong uh, but that's just because it's a back lock and back locks are extremely strong just by their nature and cold steel always prided themselves on their strong back locks and then once they got the triad for forget about it all right so next up is a new a very new one for me this is the drop point xl voyager love the xl voyagers though i got rid of my tanto and my clip point a while ago and now i I have to get them back <laughs> or buy them back. I'll get them serrated this time, maybe. I don't know. I'm starting to feel like I need the full collection. Uh, anyway, this one, I love that drop point blade with that sort of continuous belly. This is a very, very useful knife. Use this as a backyard knife and uh, th did the job great. It's no wonder it's based on the Barong blade and the Barong is a Filipino uh, sword come machete or vice versa and just great at cutting things uh, on the swing. Look at that belly. It's uh, You got almost a recurve effect here, and then you've got the back slashing of sort of a uh, an upswept blade. Uh, this is one of their new ones, so that's Aus 10A. And this is the only Voyager, including the 4-inch, uh, that has jimping. Uh, I wouldn't mind if it was brought into all of the designs. I'm not sure why they 
have it just on this one, but um, jimping is always welcome as far as I'm concerned. Okay, so that's the uh, XL Voyager drop point. Next up is the XL Voyager Chris blade. Love the Chris blade. Uh, this one is evocative of a more Filipino style, broad Chris blade. Uh, whereas the uh, other one we saw reminds me more of a Malaysian or, um, yeah, more of a Malaysian Chris where it's more sinuous and thin. This is just broad and menacing like a giant bread knife with a hawk build tip. Uh, this will just slash and cut all day long. And then the nasty part on a thrust with this is that uh, these humps uh, opposing the teeth humps or, or these humps opposing those humps make the make the wound large and gaping and horrible and uh so uh don't think that the chris blade is a joke or a weird you know just uh funny looking and therefore just you know valuable for its um novelty it is a pretty wicked weapon i put an aluminum a raw aluminum um snaggle tooth mf on this one so that i can bring it to bear at a moment's notice Okay, so this one is the five and a half inch. So most of the, the these XL Voyagers are five and a half inch. So this is the XL Voyager Vaquero five and a half inch. This is OS 8 uh, from the generation of the two others that I gave away, but I couldn't, could not part with this. Uh, this is based on the Yatagan, the Turkish knife called the Yatagan that has that deep, nasty recurve, but also sweeps up. So you get that, that, slashing that you get from a sort of a scimitar at the tip and then it puts the tip center line so you you can thrust from any angle and you know where that tip is it's like a dagger it's center line uh, but you have all this you have all this slashing and recurve uh, happening so just a great knife these avoid uh, the vaquero uh, profile is just I love it. I love it. I love the Yatagan. Uh, it's one of my favorite sort of exotic or, or ethnographic swords um, or, or knives. And I just love seeing it translated into the Voyager series. So much so that I have also this uh, signature edition. This is CTS XHP coated, as you can tell, with a snaggletooth MF so I can bring it to bear and with these nasty serrations. And Lynn Thompson's adorable uh, sort of, um, you know, elementary school librarian signature. Uh, he's an interesting guy, man. I got to say, he is just an interesting guy. Uh, for any of you who doubt, he is 1,000% he is legit in terms of a uh, sword uh, martial artist. A regular martial artist for sure, but anything, uh, you know, Kali and Hema and it, you know, fencing, all sorts of stuff. That He is truly, he's been studying it for a long time, and uh, he's very good, and he's fleet of foot, even though he is so ample of carriage. Um, but I love his signature, this deadly guy. He's like, doo -doo -doo. anyway, great knife, great knife. I love to see them change up the color of the grivery. Uh, I'd love to see more of these. There was a signature, Lou, not Lou Rawls, but Rawls, the guy who writes a famous uh, survival blog, they did a, a version of the Tonto black with green and uh, half serrated. And I'm looking for that now and I can't find it. I'd love to love to get my hands on that. <clears throat> one that I know a lot of people want to get their hands on, I have, is the Recon 1 XL. And this is when they brought it back for a short time in XHP. I shouldn't say they brought it back. This made the transition to XHP and then they stopped making it shortly thereafter. I'm not sure why. Um, but once I acquired this and its clip point brother, that's when I got rid of the Tonto and clip point Voyager XLs, thinking that that was a necessary move for some reason. Hollow, hollow ground, five and a half inch, super razor sharp. Uh, I want to do that same thing that I did with the... Um, with this recon one here, I just haven't, just kind of lazy about it, but um, haven't had to sharpen it because I don't really use it. Awesome knife. You can come up here. You can come up here. You can come up here. You can come back here. You can come way back here. Just a great knife. Gives you standoff range. Uh, would be an awesome like backpack, do everything knife. Everything from camp 
to fighting to whatever. Um, this be a great all around knife because it's got that massive, massively stop pinned triad lock and uh, very stout G10 handles. Uh, let's see, next is, yes, the clip point version of it. Love this thing, full flat ground, super slicey, very broad blade. Uh, this is also XHP steel, a different kind of coating uh, that is more matte and, um, you know, matte <laughs> compared to the, uh, compared to this one. I love both of these things. I've had multiple offers on these knives, people who want to buy them because they don't make them anymore, but you know, they're just so good. We love the Recon. We love the Recon one, most of us, and to have an XL version of it, what a treat. They just came out with the smaller ones again, so who knows? Maybe they come back out with this. Um, great action on these things too for such big knives. Um, I love this right here. I like putting my thumb right there and pulling back on that with it. Feels very secure. Anyway, that's very particular, but what a great knife this is. Beautiful bowie shape, and again, a versatile and large handle. All right, next up, the Espada. Uh, this is the old version of the large Espada in G10. So this is OS 8, a blasted OS 8A. It's got a different blade shape than the Espada now, and I'll, show, I'll contrast that in a second. Uh, great knife. Same thing with the grips. You can be all the way back here for standoff. You can come here. You can come here. That's the natural kind of grip. You can come up here. You can wave the blade open. This one based on the Spanish Navaja um, super folding blade that uh, the people carried once they were no longer allowed to carry swords. They still had to protect their honor. Uh, this one is uh, hollow ground, as you can see from that picture, nicely hollow ground, love that. And here I'll show you this and I'll contrast the blades. Uh, this I got not too long ago because I've always wanted a full dress version of the large. This is, these are aluminum bolsters. They're a little grungy right now, but also a polished G10. Beautiful, see how they changed the blade shape. So they made it more of a traditional Bowie here. I love them both. I like having this old style. Uh, but I also love the shape of this new one. Uh, this is fully flat ground. Feels just so good in the hand. It's a great weight. And um, man, these Espada knives are just beautiful. Love them. Okay, next up, another one that's really cool. This is based on the Japanese helmet breaker. Or no, I'm sorry, sword breaker. And I can't remember what it's called. Uh, but designed by Andrew Demko, who's a Japanese martial arts expert. He grew up, his father, Andrew Demko's father, had an Aikido studio and taught Japanese martial arts and swordsmanship. And so the Demko brothers grew up doing all that stuff. And Andrew, uh, Andrew is quite adept. And this is based on a traditional Japanese sword breaker. Uh, sword breaker or helmet piercer? I cannot remember now that I'm flapping my gums. But I love it because it reminds me of a a uh, Ganunteng, the um, the sort of sickle-shaped sword from the southern Philippines uh, that's used in Pekiti Tersha Kali. And um, it's just got this wicked reinforced point, but a nice, long, slender, slightly hawk-billed uh, blade. It's very thin. This is like a very, very pocketable five-and-a-half-inch bladed folder. And um, that's because they don't make any attempt to deep carry it, you know. It's, um, you got about that much sticking out of the pocket, but if you can tolerate that, oh, this thing is great to carry. This is probably the best of all of these to carry. Um, this is XHP steel, I believe. Yep. Made in Taiwan. Beautifully uh, done, uh, alternating colored G10 handles. And, uh, yes, you can use the fuller to open it. Um, just, you still need wrist though. All right, on to the six-inch blades and, and and beyond. So here is the Vaquero Grande. I showed you its little brother, the El Hombre, earlier. Uh, these are of the same era. By the way, I love that jimping, that old-school file-style jimping. It, it's very effective also. Um, but here you see it again on the Vaquero Grande. 
and look at that my god so this is has been this was my outdoor lawn knife for a long time uh once i moved to virginia but before that i used to actually carry this thing around on my person when i lived in new york city years ago and now it just if uh, it, it scares me in retrospect. It makes me fear for past Bob uh, because I could have ended up in such prison. You know, privileged uh, young white guy gets caught with this weapon on him for whatever reason. Let's make an example. Um, you know, I could have been in Rikers. Anyway, I can't believe I carried this, but thank God uh, I never got pinched. Thank God I always was, uh, you know, above board. Um Anyway, so here we go. I have a lanyard on here uh, for that that style use. And uh, yeah, you can really do some swinging with this. And of course, this is pre-triad, but still extremely stout. Extremely stout um, lockback. Uh, these have seen a lot of use, and I've sh sharpened them a little bit. You can tell they're getting a, a little low on the heels here, those serrations. Speaking of serrations, next up we have the Holdout 1 fully serrated. This is an Aus 8. I bought this on a whim. It was 40 bucks on Amazon a few years back, and I was like, eh, okay. I used to have its four-inch brother unserrated and sold it. Of course, I regret that. I think at this point, Cold Steel is kind of like Emerson and Hinderer and a couple of other brands. It's just like the ones I have, I'm keeping, and I'm not selling them, period. I'm just keeping the, keeping the Cold Steels, and I'm keeping, uh, and I have a certain others that are like that. So, um, yeah, um, so I had the four inch, got rid of it, regret it. Uh, but this is really nice. It's got a, a big grippy G10 handle. It's one of those knives that even though there is zero handguard there, um, I feel pretty confident holding it and I would feel pretty confident thrusting it. You know, it's a very acute point, but stout and it's chisel edged up there because it's serrated. And you'll find that most serrated knives are generally chisel edged um, on the hole. And uh, you've got these speed holes for your fingers to sink into. Um, just a just a great knife, just nasty, nasty knife. I knew a guy who taught Krav Maga knife technique and he carried two of these um, at once, which I thought was pretty cool. <laughs> All right. Next up is... Yes, the Chris version of the large tie light. This is a Lynn Thompson signature edition. There again is that awesome signature. This is number 92 of this beautiful, sinuous, more Malaysian style Chris blade. Look at that downward tip. That tip is just nasty, nasty. And that's what you want. You want your Chris to end on that sort of hook that way so you can really maximize, um, well, the efficacy of your slashes. Um, great action on this one. Very stout lock, but you can just flick this open with your thumb and you can also wave it open and you can't really use that at all. Uh, but great six inch blade. I, I've never had a large tie light. Well, never before this one, uh, but this was the perfect excuse to get one. I like these Lynn Thompson signature uh, things. I think he's just coming out with a signature Spartan with a green handle. Okay, next up, this was a, a gift from my brother. This is an early Raja 2. I've had people say that's not a Raja, that's a fake. Uh, it is not. They they took, they took, what was it? I think they had an issue with the something, or uh, maybe it was the clip or something. Um, but it's, it's verified real. Um, not that that matters, but a very cool knife. Um, very stout, sturdy, and just, it's got that weight of this big grivery handle. You know, it's, it's Coke bottled here. It's contoured, uh, all over. You've got these, uh, nice little landing spots for, for choking up and for, um, holding it here, holding it way back here. Look at that the slash you'd get from that, the chop you'd get from that uh, kukri blade. Now, this is a six inch, right? One, four, five. Yeah, this is a six inch. That's quite, quite a blade. Very sharp. This is uh, also blasted OS 8. Um, yeah, cool handle. 
Great shape. All right. Uh, last, second to last, I should say, is the Espada XL. Or is this XXL? This is the Espada. This is the big one. <laughs> That's a seven and a half inch blade. Uh, this is Aus 8A, and this one is hollow ground. This is an early one. A gift from my brother. No, wait. No, this was not a, this was a gift from me to myself. Uh, he got me the other one. I'll show you. But yeah, great thing about this knife. You can hold it way back here. And yes, it's secure. Or you can hold on to that trigger for real secure. That sub hilt there. And have a, let's see, what do we have here? Oh, about a, about a 13 inch standoff range if you have it back here. And then you can move up here. You can move up here. You can come up here for fine work. Believe it or not, this would actually make a good pack pack backpack knife also if you're going out uh, in the woods. And the reason I say that, I, I hear people laughing and snickering and chuckling, but you kind of get a, a lot of things out of this. You could get a light machete. You could get a, um, a, a great, you know, carving knife and just kind of camp knife. You definitely have a good food knife there. You have something here that you would feel like you could protect yourself with. It's a substantial blade. I don't know. What do you think? I, I think there is a great case for these XL knives, especially one like this that's so utilitarian with that uh, just G10 and Aus 8, something you can field sharpen easily, and then that incredibly stout triad lock. Okay, last up is the dressy version of that, also hollow ground, which I'm not sure they do anymore, and also Aus 8. This is with the uh, aluminum bolsters and that gorgeous polished contoured g10 that shiny blade this was a gift from my brother thank you Vito. such a cool cool knife i love you really get the full effect of how this is supposed to look when you have it in the dress version because you get the real sense of this being kind of like a horn handle uh, especially with that tip there and with the uh with the bolster ah oh, just so great and if you have the metal to carry this in your pocket you can wave it open though I have tried that and have almost stabbed myself in the leg with this because it's so damn big. It cams open, it's like, it's right on top of you. Um, I think that's more just me think, worried about it, but. All right, so that does it. Thanks for uh, sticking around. I tried to keep it as quick as possible, tried to keep the anecdotes down, uh, but that is my cold steel folding knife collection. And I know that when I stop rolling, I'm gonna remember some cold steel knife that is spirited away somewhere and, and hidden uh, that I'll remember that I didn't show. But on the whole, this is what I got when it comes to cold steel folding knives. Thanks for watching.